good shape. Cool. First TV. God knows what kind of condition it's in. You can see that. Oh, it is there. Okay. It is there. I couldn't get it open, so I thought it was dead. But hey, what do you know? It's complete. Yeah, it looks good. That means everything is here on this. So I mean, tell me about it. You, you were watching it and it stopped I, working when I it was, was an earthquake? I was literally watching a college football bowl game. And, you know, this had to be, I don't know how many years ago. Because, you know, a long time ago I had kids that were babies. Now they have kids. And um, the little earthquake in the valley, TV shook, stopped working. And I really? was like, yeah. I was like, okay, well. And, you know, it's like anything. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to get it fixed. Never got it fixed. But I kept it because it's the only thing I had left that was sort of the, the grandparents' thing. Yeah. And because I was in the TV business, it had a little extra oomph. Um, and at one point, it was in my office when I had an office. It made sense. I was in the TV business. I had an old TV. Again, was going to get it fixed. Went to the downtown library, tried to find the schematics. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, and it was like a, pro, a pet project that never got right. past the idea in my head. Right. But when we moved here, my wife said, you got to get rid of this TV. What were we yeah, doing? And it was, in, it was in the house, and then it was, finally, I, and I moved it outside just a couple months ago, and I'm like, you know what, it can't be sitting outside. It is not good by the beach to no. have a TV Any, sitting yeah. out. On some other website, and some guy wrote back and said, from like Ohio. And it's like, well, I might have a home for it. I said, I think I already found a home, but thank you. So, there it is. You see the amp here, Chris? Got yep. A couple six L six, no, six V sixes. Yeah. And a five U four rectifier. Made in Los Angeles, right? Yep. Yeah, Hoffman, Hoffman and Packard Bell were the two big Los Angeles companies. Well, this lived in Arizona. That's where it was, that was its original home in Phoenix. And we used to go to my grandfather's house to watch TV because he had the TV. You know, which is pretty interesting to think that You'd have, and there was like, I had like nine cousins at that point. Not, not, by the time I was older, I had like 16. So it'd be like nine kids and four, there, my dad had four sisters. So all his sisters and their kids and my grandparents would gather, usually on a Sunday, and we'd watch television. Yeah, now you're not even socially acceptable unless you have a TV in the back, in the bathroom and in the back in of your each. your car. Right, in the back of your, the headrests of your car. Right. And another drop-down TV so the people behind you can watch the movie. And I always loved these dials. I mean, you know, and, yeah. you, would and you would dial it in like a rheostat kind of thing. It was just fabulous. Oh, look at that. It's a continuous tuner. Yeah. yeah. No ratcheting. And, Those and are kind of rare. And where's the... It's an AM, AM radio. AM, FM. Yeah. AM, FM. And we actually had really good radio reception. Uh-huh. Even after the TV stopped working. I would listen to the radio. It was a nice sounding speaker. I had this huge RCA console uh, TV, record player, radio, television that was the other thing I kept. That actually was my parents' first TV. But I, I got rid of that four years ago in a, in a, in a yard sale moment. Yeah, those are cool. Those it big, was so big. The it was, big combos. Oh, it was, it was just, you know, I think he's got one from yeah. the 70s. It was probably from the 60s. Yeah, yeah no, had, like a CTC-16. Actually, it was a Zenith, and it, had, okay. and it had these knobs that everything moved on these different planes. So all of the audio, there was like a tuner knob for bass yeah. and, and treble and, okay. ba ba and balance. And it was just a fabulous Nice piece. unit. But, again, no room. Had to, had to go. But the knobs are intact, so, you know, that's 90% of the, the... Half the stuff I ever see anywhere, they're missing a knob. Yeah, I'm always missing something. So yeah. this is, you know, I think you guys are going to have something people will enjoy uh, enjoy 
watching your videos and hopefully you'll enjoy watching this. This is actually very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad I found somebody who will appreciate it. Because the worst thing, I, I just didn't want to take it to like, you know. To the, yeah. Salvation well, Army or wherever. Or, yeah. <laughs> Most they wouldn't place, take most it. People won't take it. Yeah. No, you'd have to find someone who would want like an antique yeah. dealer. I mean, somebody or said, you know, I could take it to a prop house. That yes, you, yeah. And I knew, you know, I know, I certainly rented old televisions from prop houses. Okay. Work, but you know, it's like this thing. Frankly, it's. I just wanted to find somebody who'd want it, and enjoy it. And the fact that you guys make a little movie is really cool. So. All right, guys. All right. Well, good luck. Yeah, well, you. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to get it in there without... Yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, I do you know need, how to get it Do you in. need um, anything to... No, I got blankets. got blankets. I got all of that. All right. We'll, we'll get it home. The first thing we'll do is we'll check the picture tube. You see the back it's is It's metal. metal. Yeah. Is that rare? Uh, usually they're that kind of perf... Perf board, yeah, like yeah, press yeah, board that, stuff. Like super yeah. hard... Cardboard stuff. I think this was about as high end as you could get. It I would back. agree with that. Yeah. I, I mean, agree. my grandfather was a fairly well-to-do guy, and um, and he had a huge family. Um, and so, when he bought the TV, he was buying the TV for the family. I mean, it's almost like an episode of some you know, 1950s you know 60s Lucy show. Yeah. Where it's like the family gets the television. I mean, I remember it's like there's a TV in the family. And when you say that to your, I tell my kids that. Yeah. My granddaughter's watching everything on her on an iPad. She's right. Five. Right. You know, this is so huge box. <laughs> you know, so far I mean, removed from that. Yes. I mean, I'm 61. Oh, it's so the Jetsons. You I know. I think, like in '59, I was five. So if this is a '59, I was five. It's a '58, I was four. I mean, right. so I was very little. Yeah. My earliest TV thing, I'm like this, you know, little toddler guy, basically. But w I watched TV on this TV until I was probably 10. Okay. Because we didn't have a TV. Yeah. You know, my parents thought buying a TV was a big, you know, well, who needs a TV in the house? Mm -hmm. Here's who needs a, a TV for? Here's a question for you. How many hours a day did it run? This? Back yeah. in the day? Back in the day. How many hours a day? Probably only think? three, two or three hours. Because what was on, most of the day there was nothing on television. Then there'd be TV at night. By the by, the '65, it was all the time. Okay. You know, in Arizona, we had there's a show called Wallace and Ladmore Show. You guys ever heard of this show? Mm -hmm. It was a kid show that ran in Arizona for like ever. It was their local right. Channel Five. These two guys. If you ever Google Wallace and Ladmo? Okay. And this guy Pat McMahon, fantastic. They made their own movies and stuff. So that would be on in the afternoon. So really special days until we got our own TV. I would get to go to my grandparents' house in the afternoon and watch Wallace and Ladman. Right. And watch cartoons, Mary Melody cartoons and, and you know, mostly Warner Brothers stuff. That was, that's what they ran a lot of. Right. Um, and some Mickey, not a lot of Disney, because Disney was still pretty, even back then was pretty controlling of what okay. they allowed broadcasters to show. Sure. And then we got a TV. Well, there's that whole TV code yeah. back yeah. then. I mean, we had, we had, I think I had a TV in the house when I was about 10, nine or 10. Yeah. Some big Magnavox television. Okay. It was also black and white. Um, I mean, I remember the first time we got a key color TV. God, the wonderful world of Disney was probably why we got one. My parents had been at somebody's house and seen the wonderful world of Disney on uh -huh. their color television. And all of a sudden, my parents, who didn't think much of TV, were like, yeah, we're getting a color TV. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's like seeing the HD. You know? Yeah, like, hey, I want to get a flat four, screen. You know, it was 4K yeah. for them. Yeah. So, um, but you know, in many ways, whenever I got to watch this TV as an adult, I would feel like I was, you know, sort of like it's almost like a time machine. Yeah. You know, um, there's something really fascinating about old televisions um, because the whole history of our culture is caught up. It's like old radios. I, mean, yeah. I used to collect old radios. I had a bunch of really great oh, old radios. Oh, okay. Cool. From the 20s and 30s. Um, really huge, funky. Yeah, that was the culture that back then the culture before TV back. came along and That's right. wrecked everything. Poor video killed the radio star. Yeah. Well, everything <laughs> is, you know, and look, it's, it's going to happen again, I'm sure. We'll all be watching stuff on our vid screens in some <laughs> kind of octoplex in our brain. They'll just put a chip in. 
Yeah. We'll oh, yeah. <laughs> We're all going to be on a network, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I'll just do this, you know, and I'll be <laughs> That's the doomsday old scenario. All right, I, guys. Well, I, Chris noticed that the fuse here was missing. And did you have some information over there? Yeah, this is a Hoffman chassis 176. And that is in Sam's 127, which is a pretty early one. Wow, that's an old one. 250 watts. Well, let's pull the back off and we'll check the uh, CRT. Stick an airlock here. And there it is, no brightener. A little bit dusty. Actually, it looks like one of those metal. Oh, it's a Dunbar CRT. Okay. Dunbar was in downtown LA. That oh, was I'll our look at the date on it. January is seventy nine. Seventy nine. Wow. <clears throat> wow, that's one of the latest rebuilds probably there ever was on a tube like that. Is that a metal? Yeah. So that thing could have gone to air. What is the CRT number? Do we have that? Nineteen AP four. Right. That's a pretty hard to get to these days. Yeah. Air penetrated. Nineteen air pen penetrated <laughs> four. Chassis real nice and clean, like it's been in air conditioning its whole life. The cap is loose, so we have to very carefully pry off the socket. Wait a second. Huh? Look at where the... Uh, look, look at where the... Uh, God, I'm blanking out on... Isn't this the... Uh, Tell I work on too much color stuff. I think so. No, I think that's the black and white. No, that magnet you move around on there. Oh, the ion trap. Yeah, the ion trap. Yeah. And or does this not have an ion trap? Because I don't see. Oh, I don't it. see that cut on an angle inside there. That does not. That's probably why another reason why I maybe didn't have a picture. Well, no, I I think the modern tube probably has a straight shot gun. Which wouldn't that mean that there's screen burn of some type? Hmm. I forget if you don't use the... If they rebuild the old type tube that's not aluminized without an ion trap type of gun, it burns a dot in the front of the CRT from the okay. ions. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if the filament's open. When you plug that in, if the needle does not drop, it's open, so. It dropped. It dropped. Right. Yeah, it's, it's starting to glow. Okay, what's our voltage there? So we'll bring it up. That's about 5 volts. Bring it up about there. Emission, 
gun balance. You have to do the cutoff first, right? Well, you should, but we'll see if it's see if there's anybody home. is coming up very slowly. I'm going to pause the camera. We'll come back in a minute. Alright, what's it been? About three minutes? Look at that. It just kicked up some more. Yeah. Yeah, it's waking up. It's not as fresh as some of them we've seen, but it's not that bad either. I think it might do, it might do it. I'm not pushing it. I'm not. I'm not at eight volts. I'm not uh, rejuvenating it. I'm just letting it kind of go at six volts. Go ahead. The tube has a label on it that says this tube has a straight gun and requires no ion trap. So that would be why the magnet is... So we need out. to turn it around and get the light on it and see if it's got a dot burn in it. And also, I'm... So what they must have done is, when they changed the CRT, they just stuck this on the neck there to kind of preserve it in case the tube ever got changed again. Look, at there's the AM antenna down there. The Right coil. here, the coil. Oh, it's just laying there. I wonder if this has that 9.1 megahertz FMIF. These early FM tuners that don't have AFC really just don't work good. They just drift all over the place. There oh, look go. at that. You're normal now. Let's see if there's any cutoff. Wow. It would produce a decent picture. You'd probably have to keep the brightness down. Um, might get a little cloudy. But yeah, let's t turn it around and take a look. Alright, we're going to pull the turntable out because it's disconnected and get it here in the light where we can see it. It's a three-speed... 33, 45, and 78. It's got some copper plated metal underneath. Oh, look at, we got Webster Chicago. Okay. Ooh, radio TV phone on us getting excited. Let's see. Nice motor. And bring that up. Let's see. Can you spin and the, it? And uh, the cartridge is here. Is it? But it doesn't look like there's a needle there. Uh, looks like maybe there was something that flipped. Does it look like maybe a flip style went on that? Okay, let's see. Yeah, not something you'd want to play your finest records on. But it looks pretty well What is built. the purpose of this? Sure. Yeah, probably, well, did it possibly detect the size of the record you were putting on? This would touch against the, <clears throat> the edge of the record. No, I get that, but that, that, yeah. that would clear like a two-inch record. Yeah, probably for the, it, it pro maybe it had a spring on it originally or something. I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure I will know shortly. Tone arm is uh, Bakelite, probably. And this R button is probably a reject button when you're done. 
listening. And you can turn it off here on the speed control. Next between 33 and 45 is the Here, on. move it over to one of them. Let's see if it grabs. Yep. That's Look at the arm. The arm is moving. Okay. Yeah. Probably. Hey, let's just plug it in and see if what it does. Okay. Ready? Yeah, go for it. not. There it goes, a little bit on 78. Actually, oh, look at that. Can you shift it to like 16 or is or 33? It, it kind of freezes at 45. I can't go past that. Let's see if we could get a day code on this. Doesn't this seem really... Doesn't this seem a lot more modern than... I'm thinking early 50s. No date tag on it, huh? Sure seemed like a modern changer for a a set that uses a metal cone CRT, but it's mono. All right, well we have our fuse here, and I am using the kilowatt going into the variac going into the TV. I usually wouldn't variac it, but since I don't have a fuse, I, I do have a fuse here. So I'm at 7.5 watts. If I could get this in frame. And here we go. Holy crap. Oh, 11 watts. I thought that was 100. Do me a favor. Pull that screwdriver out. Let me see if that's making contact. Okay, we got it now. 42 watts. 63. Nice Jeez. Are you on AM, FM? What are you on? I'm on TV. Go to AM. Switching to AM. Quiet at the moment. 
Well, I'm not very high on the voltage. Okay. I'm, I'm probably at uh, 4550 volts, if that. Okay. I can't believe it's even doing anything. Yeah, I don't want to ruin the speaker, that's true. It's, it's buzzing pretty bad. Maybe we can put a capacitor across it. Cut the hum down. What do we th It's that filter right there. It's the audio amp filter, I'm sure. Where does it get its audio from the TV? Where's the, this right here? Could it be this? Ah! There's what is our it? source. What is it? The record it's player input? I, that might be the TV audio. Oh, that is the phono. Okay. Huh, that's interesting. All right, so I bring the voltage up now. Yeah. Ooh, what's that? You got the TV on? No, I'm on FM. Here's AM now in full voltage. Not much audio on that. Top stories from BC Nightly News. Political conversations inside and out. Sounds like a bias problem, huh? Watch our latest broadcast anytime. Hold on, leave it on the station. I'm Jay Farmer with some great news on how you could save an average of $3,000 per year on your mortgage. Call Quicken Loans now at 800-QUICKEN to see if you qualify for the government's home Yeah, you notice how it program. cleans up when I lower the voltage? Probably got bad uh, coupling caps to the... Uh, That's 800-QUICKEN or visit quickenloans.com. When you crank it up, Yep. Wow. That's probably too much power huh, for an AM radio. Saturdays at two on Talk Radio 790 That's weird. Are you closing in on One of these is getting hot, the other one's not. Oh, okay. Enough for you to truly enjoy your golden years? Or even worse. Yeah, oh yeah. These caps are not getting hot. But Put it on TV real quick. Put a break here. Let's try this. Can you uh, uh, do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Unplug the... Boy, the, the current went... Uh, the wattage is 132 watts with the TV on. Unplug the audio amp for me and we'll see if the wattage drops down. Um, this? Yeah, that. Just pull that out. Oops, I lost everything. Hold on. Not by much. Is that 80 watts right now? Yep. And the TV is on? You're sure the TV is on? Yep. There's no filaments at all. Is that it? 138 watts? Is that what it's showing now? 135 watts with no filaments? No. That doesn't seem right, does maybe it? Maybe it gets that from the chassis down below. No, it doesn't. No? No. There's only, there's only speaker, audio in, and power here. Oh, wait. Those tubes are glowing. Why is yeah. the CRT not glowing? Well, there it goes. Did you move something? I think so. This needs to be glued on. This is unacceptable. Hundred twenty-six watts. That could be just the filaments. That's yeah, that's out. the one out of the Variac. What do we got going over here? What? 
I guess this thousand watt light is attracting every insect. All right, I pulled the 5U4 out, and this, yeah, this looks like a 70s tube. And it's kind of in a really bad place. It's up, back up there, and Chris had to remind me that this bell, you know, has a high voltage on it, so you kind of have to be, but we're going to measure the, see if there's B plus there, see if we're getting the uh, 400 volts or whatever. He's pulling up a, schematic the pin out of the thing right now all right very at about i don't know 50 volts or so and let's see i believe this is pin one what we got there nothing two 1.7 three getting something there we're getting 212 so that side of the secondary is good. Okay, four, five. One volt. Got something there. We got 213. Well, there you go. So our plate is good. Trans Maybe. Transformer is good. Maybe the rectifier. All right, we're going to check for... I disconnected the plate off the horizontal output. We're just going to check for DC there. What do you got? Nothing. 600 millivolts. Mm -hmm. Bring the variac up some more if you could. Bring it up to about 75 or so. Okay, go ahead. Seven hundred millivolts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is there after? Assuming that the tube, well, we know the tube is good because we changed it. Uh, what is there after? Choke. There's the choke. And what else? It could be a resistor, right? Yep. So something's open. We're not getting B plus on the TV side. But wait a minute. The radio, go back to AM radio. Okay. All right. Uh, we're back on AM, and I got this is the rectifier that was in the TV. Hundred and fifty watts. Why don't I have any sound? Play with the knobs. You sure we're on AM? Yeah. All right. Well, what we're going to do with this is we're going to wrap this up and we'll come back to this. We'll get a schematic on it and we'll pull the chassis out and try and figure out what's going on. It doesn't appear we have any capacitors getting warm. Uh, the radio was working. I don't know if all I did was switch these rectifiers around. Maybe I need to test those. But this is just a quick initial overview of this thing. And um, what we'll do is we'll... Uh, We'll uh, go from there. So more to come later. One of this, yes, it is green like that. They call this Easy Vision. This was kind of their gimmicky patenting thingy. I love how that's a metal plate.
continuous tuning channel. Alright, so look for a video getting this thing at least to where it'll fire up. Probably probably in a couple weeks. I'll be tied up for a little while, but next month or so.